to the life and teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Uh, because that scripture is, has no tinge of material activity at all. Uh, if you try to read Chaitanya Chaitamrita before you have understood Srimad Bhagavatam, you won't get it. I have seen this many times. So at this point, our kirtanam becomes preaching. Uh, our chanting becomes preaching. Preaching is also kirtan, because we're repeating Krishna's instructions. We're not making up anything of our own. And similarly, the smaranam, or the remembering, becomes not just our own guru, but the entire guru parampara, the entire disciplic succession. We begin to understand not only our own guru, but we see how our own guru is reflecting the teaching coming down through the parampara from Krishna. And our, our awareness begins to expand. And we understand how the different teachers in the lineage interpreted the teaching for their particular circumstances and so on like that. We start to get a much broader view, a much bigger view of the whole history of the lineage and like that. Then our padasevanam in that stage it becomes a deep study of the scripture. There's a difference between superficial study of the scripture and deep study. In superficial study, one can spit back the, uh, the teachings more or less on a mechanical basis. Oh yeah, Krishna says this, and you know, Lord Chaitanya says that. Uh, but in deep study of the scripture, one actually understands the inner logic of the scripture. Uh, the ontological significance of the scripture. This is a very advanced stage of study when one can actually understand, for example, why Krishna says this first and that next and then this other thing and then finally that. Uh, why does the Srimad Bhagavatam go through nine kantos and what are the subject matters of those kantos and why are they in that particular order? Uh, questions like that become one's focus in the stage of deep study. And similarly, the padasevanam, or sorry, the archanam, now becomes the more intimate service to the deities. Uh, not just offering prasadam or having nice kirtans, but doing the bathing and, and dressing ceremonies, uh, which are very intimate service, very deep service. And these uh, services actually lead to some very wonderful realizations. Uh, this is advanced stage of being a brahmana. Huh? And then um, one prays for steadiness. In other words, <coughs> excuse me, at each stage of devotional service, our prayer is for the next stage. Huh? So in Atman, in sorry, in uh, Anartha Nivriti, we pray for steadiness. We don't want to fall down anymore. We finally reached the stage of purity. And so we pray, please make me steady so I don't fall down. I don't want to go back to the previous stage. I'm done with that. I'm tired of that. I want the real thing. I want eternal devotional service. So we pray like that. And then similarly, um, our dasyam or our service in that stage is to understand the correct siddhanta, the actual conclusions of our lineage, uh, the, the deep reasoning that leads to the particular conclusions that were taught by our guru and by the disciplic succession going back to Lord Chaitanya and like that. We learn these things by studying Chaitanya Charitamrita. Then our sakyam, our making friends, oh sorry, I missed, yeah, is that we become a friend to all. Huh? When we actually attain anartha nivritti and we, we give up all of our material aspirations and desires, that's for the first time we become capable of being a friend to everyone. And how do you actually be a friend to everyone? Well, of course, you're preaching. Uh, and I don't mean preaching in the sense of like recruiting new members for your church, you know. I mean preaching in the sense of that you can actually take responsibility for giving people this spiritual consciousness. That's real preaching. 
Real preaching is always on the basis of consciousness, giving people the tools they need to change their consciousness, to get relief from the suffering of material existence. And finally, uh, the Atmani Vedanam is renunciation, real renunciation. Real renunciation means I not only give up sex life, I give up the desire for sex life. It means I not only give up meat eating, I give up the desire for enjoying my tongue. Huh? It means not only do I give up gambling, I also give up the desire for speculation and easy profit. Huh? You see, it mean, real renunciation means I don't even think about these things. My mind is full of much better things to think about. So I don't even care about material enjoyment. I can live under a tree. I don't mind as long as I can be engaged in devotional service. Therefore, the realization of that stage is follows the ideal character of the sadhus and develops attachment for chanting the holy name. The holy name becomes everything to me. Huh? So I automatically follow all the rules and regulations, not, not just in an external way, but in an internal way. And of course, the result of that is the next stage, nishta. Nishta means steadiness. Any questions so far? I think, two, I think we're going to have to take two sessions just to go over this because it's very long. There's a lot of different sections. But are you seeing the, are you seeing the, the natural progression of thoughts here? Huh? This is like, uh, to, to make this chart, I had to think back on my own history as a devotee. And as I went through all these stages, what did I do in each of them? Or what was my concentration? What was my focus? Question? Nero says, yes, it's very helpful, and Connor says, it's very helpful. Uh, I have a question. The Guru is said to be the representative of Krishna. Would it be more technically precise if we say he's the representative of Chaitanya? Well, yeah, because Guru in Kali Yuga means we're giving the process and the teaching that was revealed by Lord Chaitanya. So that's why we we dress and look similar to Lord Chaitanya. We follow a lifestyle similar to Lord Chaitanya. Okay? Because, you know, we're not trying to be actually uh, like Krishna. If we were, then we would, you know, we would be a big king with lots of opulence and all that. Uh, but we're actually trying to get people to worship Lord Chaitanya and to um, emulate the qualities of Lord Chaitanya that he revealed. Lord Chaitanya is Krishna himself in the role of the perfect devotee. So he's showing us how to be a devotee. He's showing us how to please Krishna by our devotional service. Of course, he's the Supreme Lord. So when he's a devotee, he's a devotee in a big way. <laughs> We're very limited and we can only do a, a, a tiny drop of uh, the kind of service that Lord Chaitanya does. But actually, we're, act we're actually engaged in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. One time, a devotee asked a very advanced uh, sage, what is your form in Gora Lila? What is, in other words, what is your, what is your uh, relationship, your eternal relationship with Lord Chaitanya? What is your form? And he said, you're looking at it. <laughs> huh? In other words, this is our relationship with Lord Chaitanya, that we're preaching his message in separation from him. Uh, this is a very relishable uh, relationship because we're trying to emulate uh, or follow his process. And we're also giving that same process to others. Right? So we have to preach by example. That's what acharya means. Achara means example. So acharya is one who teaches by example. Not just precept. We're not giving theories. We're not saying, well, you should do this. No, we're actually showing how to do that. Uh, and by showing, we're giving practical example so that people can easily follow. If we were just giving theory and then doing something else, how could anybody follow? It wouldn't make sense. So we're giving the theory and we're showing the practical example. 
Uh, therefore, we, we have to come sooner or later to the study of Chaitanya Charitamrita because the origin of our disciplic lineage, the origin of the particular version of the esoteric teaching that we're giving is coming from Lord Chaitanya. Another question? From Neville. Uh -huh. Is it possible to be in different stages, roads, under the different modes of worship, Kali? Meaning not exactly in line, but... Yeah, I mean, any chart like this is always, is just, is going to be an abstraction. This is just categories, uh, conceptual categories for uh, trying to understand where we are approximately. Uh, because this whole world of devotional service is completely subjective, we are uh, sometimes in one stage, sometimes in another stage, like that. Although it becomes a lot more stable once we reach nishta. Uh, nishta means steadiness. So uh, the things start to